Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Magda and today we're going to talk about Malta. So let's get started. So last year in October I went to Malta alone and uh, now the season is starting more or less April, May is the time when this stuff starts to open up on Malta and all this stuff. So Malta is a small island close to Italy in a southern part of Europe and I went there on a solo trip. I think Malta is a great place to do a solo trip. Tickets are relatively cheap even from Luxembourg so that's actually very surprising. I went there with Ryanair it was around three three and a half hour flight. It's a little bit scary when you get into Malta because I was flying from the like I was seeing from my window only the sea and I didn't see the island and it was a little bit cloudy and uh, moody and uh, the sea was like super navy blue uh, so it was a little bit scary I have to say and then the island is super small and the airport is relatively close to the you know, the edge of the island. So, so yeah, but definitely a great place for the solo trip. I went there in October and I will talk a little bit about what I've heard and what I've seen about uh, the seasons. So the season is from more or less April to October. But if you go in April, May, maybe beginning of June, and then in end of September and October, you will not be in a high season. So you will still see everything open but much less tourists and the prices probably will be more available. I paid, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, 80 or 90 euro both ways to fly and then I stayed in a hostel in the guest house, later I will mention as well the prices, but my best friend she went at the beginning of September, she also didn't pay too much for the hotels but she had tons of tourists and the thing is that Malta is great for traveling alone without a car. You can travel with someone as well, that's not an issue, but you don't need a car to travel because the public transportation is great. However, during the high season, so end of June, July, August, beginning of September maybe, depends on the year, you will see the public transportation packed and there are some places where you have a bus once an hour so it's a small bus it's around i don't know 50 60 people and you will see that it's a um, that it's not working super great but definitely recommending it if we talk about public transportation first of all you can go with the public transportation from the airport second of all there is a special card if i pronounced correctly is tajina card and this is basically a Explorer cards for tourists, let's say, that you can buy seven day pass for, let me just check, do, 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 I know that it's somewhere mm, 21 euro for adults and 15 euro per kids. And this is for all the public transportation days, nights. Then there's additional one where you have also included the ferry to Gozo, but I'm pretty sure it was not that profitable because it was like 30 something and Gozo ferry was like few euro. So definitely this one is to consider, but for sure I recommend you a 21 euro card for adults. Seven days, all public transportation, including the transportation from the airport. What I know of, there are no really special shuttles that are paid, so you can always take a public transportation. You can buy this card on the airport, you just say seven day explorer card or like public transportation card for tourists and they will sell you, you will see this Tajina thing and there are many many more places on the website of the public transportation of Malta you will see the special locations of where you can buy it but if you're coming to the airport I would say that's the easiest way to do if the stuff is still open if you don't come super early or super late I don't know the opening hours but I would assume airport has quite nice opening hours and then you just if I remember correctly you just have to pass it when you're entering the bus so that works perfectly and yeah that way you don't need a car. Also, they drive quite messy and they drive on the opposite side of the road. So it's not that easy, let's say, to get used to it if you are normally driving on the right side of the road. And then also buses drive crazily. Uh, so also other drivers do. So yeah, that's definitely something to be aware of. And just finishing the topic of the buses, most of the buses pass through Valletta. And there is like a main station Valletta that's kind of like outside of the city center, but there's like huge terminals. I don't know how many, but like 20, 25 bus stops and you have specific spot for each bus. I think even Google Maps show you which specific spot you have to go to, but definitely something to be aware of that you're going to see this place a lot. And sometimes you're going to have to kind of fight to get into mostly with the end of the night. And I was in October, uh, like middle of October, I was between 10th and 17th. Sorry, I had to look down because it was a year ago. So it was middle of October and there was still so many people. So I cannot imagine what is during the season. The weather was still nice. I still had like 25 degrees the water was still nice and warm and yeah so about the prices tickets up to you mine were relatively cheap public transportation in my opinion super cheap because 21 euro for seven days 
Then Sleepy, I can tell you how much I paid. I paid for the hostel in two different times because I arrived, I took two or three nights in a hostel for 16 euro 0.5 because it was during the week and I had a hostel in Siem, Sliema and it was called Granny's Inn. Honestly, I really recommend you to stay in Sliema. It's, it's relatively central. You have you are more or less in the middle of the like more or less you're on the side of the island, but most of the stuff is on the right side of the island or bottom of the island, and you just have to go anyway to Valletta to get into other places. And it's very close to Valletta, either with the bus or the ferry. So you have great connections. And if you want to go to the north, you have amazing con connections to the north and to the side of the island. So it's quite a good place to see, and uh, you will see a lot of young people and all that stuff. Granny Scene was quite nice. A day had mostly like six people rooms and they were a mixed gender so I mean if you look on a website some are female some are mixed gender but they are definitely clean and uh, they had a kitchen very nice location and there was like five or ten minutes walk from the Lidl uh, which was like on the way from the bus stop so you could get out of the bus go to the Lidl buy your groceries go to the hostel cook for yourself so if you want to do it on a cheap site that was definitely a good thing so as I said 16 and a half per night during the week and 19 during the weekend but I was in October and now inflation and everything so the prices might change but I would say even if that would be like 25 euro per night for the island it's definitely nice then I stared uh, two nights in a guest house that was called Tarona guest house I had a room for myself with a double bed and a bathroom inside my room without any food it was 37 euro per night during the week of course again prices might change but I would say you should not think that it's like super expensive you can find cheaper options I saw few other hostels I just just took this one because it was in Bujiba so this is like super north so I was closer to Gozo but Sliema the granny's in super nice reviews as I said they had a kitchen the rooms were available and uh and the price but there were a few other hostels in Daria there are hotels as well so you can choose anything you can either, either be closer to Valletta or closer to St. Julian's but Malta is definitely a place where you're going to be able to find something cheap as well about food why I mentioned it's so nice that there was Lily close by because Malta instead of the seafood they don't really have like super super typical food that you can eat there so I mean they have seafood and pasticci that are like kind of like buns with salty stuff that are more like snacks so basically if you go to the restaurant most of them are quite expensive so if you want to go on budget restaurants are definitely not a good option for you I think it's very nice to eat some seafood over there because it's freshly out of the sea and they have also nice fishes but about this later but be aware that eating every single day lunch and dinner outside and probably breakfast as well is going to put your budget of the trip much higher. So I recommend the place which is close to the grocery shop and uh, in this case Lidl. The prices were more or less like in, I would say, Luxembourg slash France. And there were tons of things, tons of things from Italy. And then also next to this hostel, there was like a small grocery shop, like, you know, kind of like a bazaar, market, whatever, where they had mostly vegetables and fruits, but you could buy some other stuff as well. So this one was uh, right on, a uh, on the corner. So definitely something to be happy about as well. Another thing is that there are many, many things in English. So everyone's, not everyone, but like so many people speak English. All the information is in English. Uh, so it's relatively easy to commute in the island so that's uh, super nice you can buy also a lot of stuff online but also in a place you can buy it it's not an issue so now I will show you more or less my itinerary my schedule for the trip as I mentioned I was seven days Monday to Monday so let's say day of arrival and day of departure kind of like non days but still and then I will mention a few things that I didn't see but I've heard that it's very good to see and that they are super nice so i'm gonna look down as through all the video because i have my my notes over here but yeah let me start with uh, with one more thing okay sorry so boat to gozo is much cheaper from the north i don't remember the name of the city i will write you down over here but it's close to bujiba and on top of it to get from there to like southern let's say valletta Sliema side at night it's relatively difficult so it's much easier if you stay in Bujiba. At least that was my approach. Then also you have amazing boat like ferry from Sliema to Valletta where you can see Valletta from the 
see and you can see the city panorama and like you know cupola and everything like this so it's super nice to take a ferry i think it was like two or three euro you don't have to take it both ways you can just take it from Sliema to Valletta it's super nice otherwise you can take the buses that's going to be included in your uh, Tagina card but there are two things that i really really recommend if you're going to Malta first of all take this ferry to Valletta from Sliema and second of all go to Gaza because Gaza is super beautiful and one more thing as i mentioned with food there are pasticci i recommend to try some people love it some people don't find it super amazing. Most of the times they were my lunch or something like this. They're literally like small buns with different filling, either with uh, peas or with mushrooms and ham or cheese or some other stuff that you will see. They are like salty. And then you have tons of like kind of pastries that are also sweet, some with dates, some with other stuff. But pasticci, I really recommend to try because they can save you tons of times not wasting in a restaurant, not wasting in a, you know, eating just the bread because usually you buy them and they are still quite warm and they are fresh. So up to you, but I recommend them a lot. And they were like in prices, super ridiculous prices, like one, two euro per thing. And as I said, that would basically last me as a lunch. So up to you. But now let's go to the itinerary, the schedule of my trip. So I arrived on the first day. Um, I didn't arrive super early, I think I arrived around like, around, like 2 or 3 p.m. So before I got to the hostel, it was like 4 or 5. Then I like, you know, check in, figure out my room situation, shower, whatever. So I arrived to Sliema uh, from the airport and then I just went for a walk to St. Julian's. It's, I don't know, 2 or 3 kilometers to go. You go next to the sea if you enjoy the seaside. But it's not like on the beach, you're going like on the street let's say and then you have few ways to go down but you can sit down on a bench or sit down on the rocks and just enjoy the sea so i recommend to do it as uh, a lot if you are arriving late if you're arriving early i would recommend you to go with a ferry to valletta just to see it either this is going to be your whole trip to valletta or to see it and decide if you want to go back another day i didn't have enough time so i just went to st julian's and i did you know i got some water whatever like you know first day arrival uh, trying to figure out my life but yeah definitely recommending to see some like this you know walking from Siena to St. Julian's it's very very nice and can be very relaxing so that was my first day you can also do Valletta if you're arriving earlier day number two I went for the boat trip I was not super keen about the whole thing but I had one day left in my itinerary without knowing what to do so I decided to take this boat trip the boat trip was Blue Lagoon and Crystal Lagoon with Pomino Island so that was the more or less the description of the trip I found it on TripAdvisor but I bought it from their website and they were called Sea Something Sea Adventure and I recommend them the trip was nice however you see the price 25 euro and actually you have to pay 30 because there's like a fee whatever so 30 euro for the trip is it worth it in my opinion yes because you spend the whole day on the boat I mean probably you have some other way to get to Comino that is cheaper or to go to Blue Lagoon or to go to Crystal Lagoon probably there are cheaper ways but I think that's quite nice because you're like six hours on the ferry with people I was actually super scared because I went there alone and I entered a boat and everybody are in couples everyone like seriously there were couples and families and then luckily one girl sat down next to me and she seemed alone as well and um at some point the woman was walking around and she's like do you want to see the special lagoon when you get to Comino the trip is like I don't know I think it was like 5 10 or 15 euro I don't know maybe 15 euro and do you want to see it like uh whatever so I'm with this girl and I'm like yeah why not I mean we're here why not so we bought this ticket and we started to talk and uh, we made friends and then also when I was on Comina I made friends with uh, another couple who was there the trip was nice if you like to uh, swim if you like the water it was super nice because it was stopping in different places and you could go into the water and uh, you could go a little bit snorkeling so basically you could see some fishes you could see stuff around in the water and they also had stuff to put on you if you are not so comfortable with swimming so either they were giving you the noodle or I think someone would give you the life best but I swim so I just had the snorkeling mask and uh, that's it you could also rent it from them so that's also a good thing on the boat you could buy food drinks whatever you wanted but you could also bring your own food and nobody would say anything it is let's say very touristic thing to do my boat was relatively crowded so I have no clue how is it during the day I think we were starting around 9 a.m. I had to go from Siena to Bujiba because they were departing from Bujiba and that's how I know it's difficult to get from 
would you about to stay about later in the night? Because we were waiting for the bus forever and it was like 6 p.m. or 7, like not super late, but we were waiting forever for this bus. Uh, for sure, take a sunscreen because you're gonna be a lot on the sun. Then uh, you can also take a trip to Gozo. I wouldn't recommend it because it was a very small trip. You were just dropped off in the capital of Gozo and that's it. And then otherwise you would stay in Comino and you can go a little bit around Comino. I enjoyed it a lot. You can also go on a, for a swim or something like this. So I would, I prefer to stay in Comino and I enjoyed it a lot. But if you want to go with them as well to Gozo, up to you. I wouldn't say it's the best idea if you like to travel and explore. So that was my second day. Uh, you have also more other trips that if you go to TripAdvisor and like boat trip, Malta, you will see tons of them. So just choose one that works for you. For me, sea trips definitely worked well, were on time, super nice, everybody spoke English and they would tell you what to do. So that works. Then day number three, that was the day when I had to get to Bujiba to be able to go the next day to Gozo. So this day I decided I'm gonna do morning in Valletta, I mean morning, morning, afternoon in Valletta and then go to Bujiba. Turned out Valletta for me was not so interesting. I went around the city, I did like, you know, the, I don't know how you call them, but they had like this uh, army stuff, like, you know, they, how they were defending the, the city and, and you can go around the city, around the city center. Then I went to the cathedral that in my opinion is super expensive because it was 15 euro, but it's super nice as well. So if you enjoy this type of things like museums, churches, stuff, very much recommending for sure. Uh, that's something that you will uh, be very happy to see. Uh, otherwise, it will be a waste of money for you, but they give you a audio guide so you can listen about every single position. So you should spend around 30 to 60 minutes over there, I would say, to hear about everything. But of course, up to you. And then I was off to Bujiba. I picked up the stuff from the hostel. I went with the bus to Bujiba. I checked in at my guest house also because I could check in after certain hours. So, so yeah, so I had to do something in the morning anyways. And then best part ever like because i love sunsets i went to golden bay area so exactly gaha no can't tufel bay and golden bay sorry for this terrible pronunciation but you can walk around and you kind of go like on a super small cliffs in comparison to the rest of malta they are small if you never saw cliffs probably you're going to be impressive anyways and you can walk around and then you can go down to the golden bay and see the sunset tip be aware that there are buses every one hour or every half an hour to go back to Bujiba. I don't even know how many to go to Sliema and if there are any. But if you want to go back to Bujiba, be sure that you're going to go right after the sunset is over. So don't wait for the sunset to slowly, you know, go down. Like, if you're already satisfied with the sunset, run for the bus. <laughs> like, mine was like, I literally had to miss last five minutes of the sunset, but at least I had a bus home. So that's something that you always have to remember in the evening, that the buses are crowded, that people are going always together, and the buses are finishing relatively early, if I remember correctly, around 8, 9 p.m. So always use Google, but but yeah, check it out just to be sure that you're gonna have a way to go back home. But definitely recommending, and you can do a little hike around, and, uh, and that's it. That's something that I really enjoyed, and I think it was beautiful. The next day, was Gozo. So Gozo started super early in the morning. You go to the, with the bus to go to the ferry place. It's, I don't know, half an hour or 45 minutes from Bujiba. And then take a ferry that's another half an hour or like 45 minutes. Remember to look around because like when you enter the ferry, you have super nice view on Gozo. So recommending it a lot to be on the right side of the ferry and not inside, but actually outside on the terraces. You can go to top floor as well. The ferry is huge, so don't worry, you will all fit in and it's super nice. Then you can go to different places. So I went to Azure Window, uh, which is not there anymore, but the area is still nice. They still have like a place where you kind of look like you're on the moon because of the rocks that are under. Then you have this small cave through which you go with the boat and you go through the Blue Lagoons. I don't know if the name is Blue Lagoon as well, but yeah, Blue Lagoon, let's say, let's call it this way. And the boat was like five euro and super recommending. All the boat tours, honestly, I recommend a lot. I only didn't do Blue Grotto because I said, okay, I did already three different boat tours, like basta, that's enough. But I really, really recommend you to see it. It is quite long for five euro, at least off season. So recommending it a lot. Then I went to Xlendi. Xlendi, there were like cliffs with a little bay as well. 
very much recommending super beautiful views the problem is that you always have to like on Gozo you kind of always have to go back to Victoria which is this main city Victoria is hmm, okay like if you like the ruins castle situation you can always go to the castle I just went there walked around and went back and I did it like in between the buses instead of standing on the main station I just went to the um, to the castle to see it and yeah that's basically it then as I said I did uh, Azure Window, Xlandy, then Taz Sands Cliff. I will also put you the names everywhere so you can see Namla Beach and Camille Mista Cave Victoria City and South Pots. I didn't do South Pots. I didn't have time to do it. They were far away and I think the buses were like every one and a half or two hours. And also in Gozo, I've met another random person that was actually a Polish guy. I've met him on a, in one of the buses. He was like 40 or something, but we spent super nice time to walk around, go to the cliffs, but basically Gozo cliffs, cliffs, cliffs and beaches and super, super nice. If you enjoy this stuff, I really, really recommend you. And yeah, I also recommend to go to Gozo when it's not rainy. You don't have to book it in advance, so you can be kind of flexible. I went on a day where it was supposed to be less rainy from all. It was still cloudy, but didn't matter. Like, I was kind of happy because at least I didn't have to worry so much about the sunscreen. So that would be for the for Gozo. I recommend you to walk around the cliffs, take good shoes, and enjoy your time over there. Then, day number five, I did Nina and Rabat. They are like old cities in the uh, middle of this island, and they are super historical. I mean, there are like basically one city together. One has a like historical part, another one is just a town. You can walk around, see some churches, uh, see some architecture. Very much recommending. However, to get there, oh, takes forever. Like for real, it takes forever to get there. I don't know why, but you go like through the middle of anywhere. Like one thing in Malta is the bus stops have like so many stops. There's not from one to another destination because there are for people who live there. So you stop 10,000 times everywhere. But you will make it and uh, that's something to to do in my opinion as well. I did it in the morning and then in the afternoon I went to the Masal Kala. Sorry for the mispronunciation, but there's like a small city where I went for like a little walk around the city and walk around the cliffs and then I mean basically I went down in one place walked 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 uh, went on the beach and walked 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 and that's it basically and I took the bus from another place because you have endless options with the buses and there I just spent super nice evening watching the sunset with the book on the beach because it was like basically a huge stone next to the sea where you had like way to go into the sea but definitely something if you want to have a chill evening recommending beautiful views a lot of cliffs again and yeah it's super nice to see as well then day number six, Blue Grotto. Blue Grotto is a place that is basically like a nice arc and down there you can take a boat to go to Blue Grotto. Why I always say that April to, I mean, a, end of April to May for start and then October, because most of the stuff is not available from November and before April. So for example, the boat that I mentioned in Gozo is not available. Blue Grotto boat is not available. Some other trips may not be available and a lot of restaurants and places will be closed. So be aware for that, but I cannot say if the Blue Grotto boat is worth it or not. It was nice to see Blue Grotto from the top. In my opinion, you can go a little bit down as well, but for me, I saw a few other places with the boat, so I was like, okay, it's enough. Then I met also a girl in Blue Grotto who I spent the rest of my day with. We went to Dingley Cliffs, and uh, just because I'm a little bit more, I don't know, adventurous, let's call it this way, we just took off in one of the bus stops to just walk like next to the cliffs walking on the cliffs for like good 45 one hour but this way we could go like all over dingley cliffs however first we had to go up the street when there were like random cars and like no sidewalk whatever but it was worth it then we went down to the city i think we took bus to dina and rabat and then i went back my way Shh, i don't remember if it was her or not and then I went to the St. Peter's Pool that is close to the city called Masalksok. However, I knew I'm going to go the next day to Masalksok. So I just went to St. Peter's Pool, which was a little of the hike. Like you go up the hill, then you go in the middle of nowhere, then you, you find the St. Peter's Pool, then you go around and you go back. Super random, but very, very worth it. If you like to swim, there were tons of people swimming. I didn't go there to swim. Honestly, I was a little bit scared about this place because you saw a lot of people partying and like you know jumping into the water i'm not that adventurous on that side i'm a little bit scared of water i mean i'm super good swimmer but i'm scared of like natural water places with the waves and like you know unknown depth of the water so when i was for example with the boat and i knew that the water is deep i didn't mind it but also it was super clear so that's a different story than jumping into the st peter's pool but 
if you're up to this, you can also do this. You can go a little bit, you know, beach party, whatever. It's always the stone, uh, not the sun, but still. Recommending for sunset as well. And I went back home almost hitchhiking. <laughs> I mean, at some point I just saw cars and I was like, should I just hitchhike? And then I was like, no, probably you shouldn't. So I took a bus, but definitely worth as a good walk around. But again, be prepared for good shoes. Be prepared for a lot of walking. Sunday, seven day, I went with people from the hostel to Masaksok. Why on Sunday? Because there's a fish market. So you basically arrive to this beautiful town with like beautiful colorful boats and uh, you have tons of people. I cannot even imagine during season how crowded it is. You have cheeses, you have fishes, some sweets, you have everything tons of things for tourists as well and then also you have restaurants which have the fresh fishes from the market we went to one of the restaurants unfortunately i don't remember the name but we went to one of the restaurants right next to the to the places luckily we somehow got the table there it was outside we got amazing fishes i was with two french people we shared the food a little bit between each other so we could try each other food and we just spent a super chill sunday lunch and basically that was our day then i think they went to st peter's pool and i went back to the hostel and uh start to pack and you know go see the sunset on the on the terrace and all that way uh, in the meantime i didn't say in the meantime after go so i went back to Sliema to the hostel so the other stuff that i missed and i know that it's super popular to see it's Pope, Poppy, Popeye village the cartoon character thing uh, i was never into it people say it's pretty now when i was checking for the video it was saying temporary close so i don't know if it's off season and that's why it's close or if something has happened so check it out for sure before going but people say it's very worth it then next one is amusement slash aqua park so if you have kids or if you enjoy the stuff it's between Sliema and Bujiba uh, and probably there are some more as well then there are three cities so Valletta, Floriana, Flori, Florian, Flor, Flor, sorry for the name I wrote it super badly but I will say it here and Tieta there are like three cities that were the main cities for like defense of the island and basically there's a lot of like army stuff and they are like historical cities i just went to valletta i didn't have a chance to go to other two i just cross it off from my list and that's it because i prefer to go for the beach for the sunset the other day than going for another sun scene but you definitely can do it then you have a few caves that i didn't do so there's cave close to bengahasa Garhasa Cave, right to the name right here. It's in the south of the island and it's like in between the Masak Sok and Dingley Cliffs. So it's like somewhere in the middle. Then there's like Victoria Lands, but I honestly didn't find a way to arrive there. There are other cliffs that I didn't do, but like, you know, up to you. You can, I, I did quite a lot of cliffs. I did all the cliffs in Gozo, not all, but most of the cliffs in Gozo. Then I did the cliffs in Golden Bay. Then I did Dingley Cliffs. Then I did Masak Sok. I did cliffs around Masak Sok. So I was okay with cliffs. But if you want to do other cliffs, go for it. If you find a way to arrive there, probably they're beautiful as well. Then Mosta is a city that is always recommended with Nina and Rabat. I didn't find an easy way to go to Mosta, so I didn't do it but everybody recommend it. Then there is Mugar, that is another city that I didn't manage to get to with the buses. And there are tons of different beaches that you can go to. I'm not super beach girl, so I had good time with that. In Goza, as I mentioned, I didn't do the South Pits spots and I didn't do the Palmixta cave that is like above the beach, just because of the time that I didn't have to, and that's it. But yeah, I think you can do a lot of stuff in Malta relatively cheaply. Most of all the stuff that you do can be for free. If you don't want to spend money on a boat, you will definitely do everything that is for free. Uh, having beautiful views. I was super lucky with the weather in October. I recommend going in October. It was not so crowded, even if, as I said, a few times I had issue to get into the bus, but definitely recommending it. So if you enjoyed this step, of stuff go to malta it will be definitely on a cheaper side if you want to make it on a cheaper side and yeah that would be it for today and let me know in the comments down below if you have ever been to malta or you're planning to go and if you enjoyed this video i would be very happy if you would hit the like button that helps me a lot with the youtube algorithm so this video will reach more people and if you haven't subscribed yet subscribe to my channel i talk a lot about luxembourg where i live and a little bit about traveling and expenses and how to travel so if you enjoyed this type of topics and you don't want to miss any of my future videos subscribe to my channel and here I leave you the video about how to pack into a small bag for one week and traveling to places. Thank you for watching, have a nice day, and I'll see you in another video.